a cooling fan, you probably added one into your piece of equipment because you want it to run longer, you want it to last longer, you want to keep your equipment cool while you're running it, which is great. But there's sometimes some issues whenever we install them that we're really blind to and we're not fully inspecting what's going on with our fan. Okay, so I installed this cooling fan right here. I hooked it up to my hour meter just with those quick connects, those uh, those crimping quick connects that you just squeeze together. But I have an issue. I have this metal beam right here, but this is actually part of the frame. And I don't want to mess with it. This fan is getting the air, getting it, pushing it through here. And with this shield, it's actually protecting my hydraulic pump that's back there. And it's actually getting the heat from the engine and everything and pushing it through the shield out on this side. The issue I had with that is that it wasn't sucking in as much air as it could because of this problem right here. Here where the fan is, I had this plate where this expended metal's at. So what I did was I drilled holes through it. And once I drilled these holes, I felt a drastic change in air pressure and airflow going through the machine. So once I, I picked up the air pressure and everything through the machine, I was like, man, that's awesome. That's great. I do want to install another fan on this piece of equipment, but there's an issue is that you need to add an alternator to this machine to keep the battery alive. Now look, don't get me wrong. I'm pretty sure that, that the battery could push it, but since we're always going to be having that draw of power, it's going to be bad for our battery. And whenever we do the costs of everything, you know, an alternator, 150, the brackets, another 25, and then you got to get a spacer for your pump and then a band, and then you have to disassemble the whole machine take it all apart, put it all back together, cuss a whole bunch over a weekend. And at that, sometimes whenever we put it back together, we have a whole bunch of extra parts that we didn't even know were extra. And that's a big problem. And I don't know about you all, but I'm not fixing to go through all that trouble just to put another alternator on there. So instead, I came up with another plan that it's probably not the best and I don't know if it's actually going to work but I'm sure it's gonna work to a point but I'm not sure if it's gonna be as efficient is it gonna make our battery last longer definitely are we gonna get more out of our battery definitely. and that's all I'm looking for I just want to get a little bit more out of it so I'm not having to replace batteries constantly or having to pull it out and having to charge it so this right, this right here is what I got. It's a solar panel. I already tested it. It works. It is supposed to be 30 watts. It is definitely not a 30 watt panel. It's probably, probably pushing about three to six watts. Maybe if that, but that, I think that's going to be enough, especially here in Texas with all the sunshine we get. I'm pretty sure it's going to be enough. So let's put it up here. And then all I'm gonna do is come in here. And these are probably not the best. I'm going to uh, get the little circles that I can actually bolt into the into here. Now this is not an installation video. I'm just showing you exactly what I'm doing to prevent my battery from dying without the alternator. I still have to go out and buy those little rings and everything, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work out and I will definitely let you all know 